And um, let me direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our source persons for today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. For our public hearing on bills regarding the declaration of a special working holiday or the National Baptist Day, House Bill Number 6522 and Senate Bill Number 1548, we would like to acknowledge our guests and resource persons from the Bible Believers League for Morality and Democracy or Bible Mode. We would like to acknowledge the Secretary General, Bishop Rio Ben Abante. From the Department of Labor and Employment, we would like to acknowledge Ms. Emilia de Guzman, Supervising Labor and Employment Officer of the Bureau of Working Conditions. And last but not the least, from the UP College of Law, we would like to acknowledge Assistant Professor Michael P. Chu, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this uh, hearing on House Bill Number 6522 and also Senate Bill Number 1548. Uh, House Bill Number 6522 is authored by, um, uh, primarily authored by Congressman uh, Abante and SBN 1548 uh, is authored by Senator Cynthia Villar and Senator uh, Bongo. So we have three measures that will be here we, that we will be hearing today. Um, and let me just read the title of S, of uh, House Bill number 6522, an act declaring January 16 of every year a special working holiday to be known as the National Baptist Day. Uh, Senate Bill number 1548 um, has the same title, uh, and let me just read it also to put into the records. An act declaring January 16 of every year a special working holiday to be known as the National Baptist Day. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will now go into uh, this discussion of this bill. Like I mentioned earlier, we only have an hour to... Uh, uh, to uh, lay down into the records the rationale for this uh, measure, of course the um, uh, the uh, uh, the impact of this measure to our uh, labor force, to our um, uh, to our um, number of days of uh, working, and also we want to uh, hear the rationale why this bill is uh, an important measure and uh, why this bill. Uh, will create positive impact to our country. So with that, I, I can see um, Congressman Benny Abante uh, is already here with us. So we can start off with the principal author of this bill, no, no less than uh, uh, Congressman Benny Abante. I thought uh, Bishop Ruben Abante is Congressman Benny because you guys look the same. Kanina, kala ko kayo na si Congressman Benny na yun pala uh, iba pala yun, no? uh, but uh, you guys, kayong dalawa? No? So we, we uh, recognize and we call on Congressman Benny Abante for his opening remarks and as well as to sponsor the measure. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Um, the House bill that has been approved for third reading... Uh, entitled uh, the National Baptist Day Bill. It's a bill that I believe uh, should be uh, uh, now uh, approved by the Senate uh, and then uh, recognized by the government. Uh, I just would like to uh, uh, tell this, the committee that uh, the uh, Baptist in the Philippines has been here for about 122 years, and uh, it is uh, they 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 uh, began the ministry here in the 1900s, and several groups of Baptists have come uh, after several waves of uh, years. It's like uh, the uh, the uh, American Baptist Convention that. Uh, uh, made their headquarters in Iloilo City. And uh, one of the uh, universities uh, in the Philippines is actually a Baptist university called the CPU or Central uh, Philippines University. Uh, and then afterwards, we have the 
uh, ABWE, the Association of Baptists for World Evangelism that came here about 20 years later. And then we have the Southern Baptist Convention. And then we have the Conservative Baptists. And later on, we have the independent Baptist groups that came to the Philippines way back in 1948. Um, the PCEC has a lot of churches that consider themselves Baptist or have Baptist affinity. So, Mr. Chair, may I uh, say uh, with uh, enthusiasm that perhaps we have around 25,000 uh, Baptist churches, both small and big, in this country. My church alone, uh, Mr. Chair, is uh, 46 years old. And uh, it came from a church that is uh, about uh, uh, 50 years old, you know. And uh, the church that I got authority from came from a church that was established in 1954. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, a recognition of the Baptist presence in the country and how that they have helped this government in uh, various ways. Like, for example, uh, giving uh, uh, relief and giving help to uh, people that have been uh, devastated by the storms and being involved in various uh, and several uh, uh, services uh, that's being done, uh, being able to help the community. And not only that, but uh, as you can see, Mr. Chair, that the Baptist people are very law-abiding citizens. And I think that is one of the biggest uh, help that any group of people can actually help the government to be law-abiding. So, Mr. Chair, I would like to really uh, request uh, this committee to please approve the uh, National Baptist Day Bill that is right now in your hands, Mr. Chair. And thank you very much for this opportunity that you gave to me to be able to just uh, give you a little bit of a glimpse of uh, Baptist history in the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wynn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Benny. Rest assured, uh, we will uh, expedite the approval of this bill. And uh, based on the number of session days, we have uh, ample time to get this going. Plus, uh, no less than our Senate President uh, uh, made a request no, to get this uh, bill up and running. So we have uh, a lot of support and, and, and recognition uh, on the importance of this bill. And so Mr. That, Chair, if I yes. may say. Yeah, go ahead, Pop. That I am praying that you will still be in the Senate next election. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman <laughs> Benny. That's a uh, very inspiring uh, statement. Uh, with that, uh, we go on uh, to the statement and also the uh, uh, comments of Bishop Ruben Abante. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Can everybody hear me? Yes, Paul, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have written you a, a letter. I hope that you've received it. And it bears the appreciation of not only the Bible mode, but all the rest of the Baptist churches who are uh, behind this uh, proposal, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am the main convener of the Alliance of Baptist Councils, uh, which actually held a, uh, a Baptist celebration last 2020. And it uh, was attended no less than by uh, the president himself and uh, Senator uh, Cynthia also was there. And uh, I am also the president of the Baptist Bible Fellowship of the Philippines. Mr. Chair, the recognition of Baptists is not a recognition of religion. It is a recognition rather of the many independent and autonomous Baptist churches all over the country. The Baptist does not have a one hierarchical structure. Each church is autonomous. And uh, while we have, of course, 
and we appreciate, you know, the Baptists are the main uh, adherents of uh, religious freedom and separation of church and state. However, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to point out that the strength of Baptists would be in how each church is autonomous and they are located in many localities around the country and they partner with communities. Yan po ang isa sa pinakamalaking bahagi na maitutulong ng mga Baptist churches para sa ating bansa. This is not simply a religion. Ang mga Baptist po, Mr. Chair, ay ang pinaka tumatayo no, ng mga churches sa banal na kasulatan. And you know, I believe that uh, you yourself, of course, realize the value of the Word of God at kung ano ito dapat sa ating bansa. Kaya ang recognition po ng Baptist ay magpapatatag sa ating bansa down to the local community level. At alam niyo po siguro na ang mga Baptists ay uh, hindi po nakikibahagi yan sa maraming engagement maliban sa pagtuturo ng banal na kasulatan, pagpatatag ng mga pamilya at involvement at pagtutulungan sa ating mga communities. And uh, ako po, uh, Mr. Chair, ay bahagi rin. I am the Vice Chairman of the Fire East Broadcasting Company. At palagay ko po, alam niyo ang background ng Fire East Broadcasting Company sapagkat doon sa... Uh, karuhatan sa Valenzuela ay napalaking, napalaking bahagi po ng uh, FEBC. At uh, sa board po ng FEBC ay napakaraming mga Baptists. So, ang panukalang batas pong ito ay uh, tutulong sa pagpapatatag ng ating mga komunidad, tutulong sa pagpapatatag ng ating mga pamilya, tutulong sa mga adhikain natin upang ang mga churches na katulad po natin ay makatulong ng husto sa ating government at sa lahat ng gusto nating makita sa ating lipunan. Kaya po, magpapasalamat po ang buong mga Baptist communities at Baptist churches at of course sa aking kapatid sapagkat uh, na-sponsor po ang bill na ito. At dumadalangin po kami na sana ay maisabatas po natin sa lalo madaling panahon. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop. And uh, Bishop, I, I, to, to Bishop and also to Congressman uh, Benny, uh, I just have a few questions. And this is also for the information of all of the uh, people who are watching us right now uh, through the Senate website. And uh, a lot of our uh, listeners and televiewers are probably Christians themselves, no? but they're not uh, well versed no? with the uh, history, with the different denominations, with the um, uh, hierarchy no? of uh, or the information the Christian of faith. I myself the, uh, is a born again Christian right now. Uh, alam ni Congressman Benny, my mother is a pastor, my tita is a pastor. Uh, in our family, there are two. Uh, pastor, pastoras no? um, in our family. And I actually went to a Christian school, no? Grace Christian High School for 10 years. So um, I grew up in a Christian uh, household. But I, admittedly, I'm not as uh, brilliant and well-versed as Bishop Proben and um, Congressman uh, Benny. Talagang uh, uh, my, my, my understanding of uh, uh, the Christian history is very superficial. So for the information of everyone and also to all of our uh, listeners and um, the public listening. Um, the Baptist is a denomination or a, a uh, subsection or a subpart of the Protestant faith. Ganun ba ho yung kanyang structure? And how is this different or similar to the born again, what we call the born again? Because... That's quite popular here in um, our country. No? And uh, maybe for the information of our listeners, how are these terms different or the same with one another? And what's the interplay of the Baptist belief to born again, to the Protestant, and to the other denominations? Now, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll throw this to Bishop or 
to uh, yeah. Congressman Benny. Anyone can answer? Bishop, yung, go ahead. Oh, yung bata. My, my brother can uh, can yeah. answer that. Yung bata po muna, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, nabanggit po ng aking kapatid ang involvement at pagpasok ng Baptist sa uh, Philippines in the early 1900s. <clears throat> Ang Baptist po, kahit sa Wikipedia, mababasa po ninyo yan, na ang Baptist ay a major na component ng buong evangelical Christianity. At nabanggit niyo yung born again. Ang pagiging born again po, or the new birth, o tinatawag natin na kaligtasan sa pananampalataya kay Kristo Jesus, ay ang unang-unang pinakadoktrina ng mga Baptists. Naniniwala po ang mga Baptist sa salvation by grace through faith. At pagkatapos nang ang isang tao ay tumanggap kay Kristo at magkaroon ng kaligtasan, ang susunod po niyan ay siya'y mabautismuhan kung kaya nagigisang Baptist. So yun po yun. Now, ang significance po ng Baptist sa buong mundo ay, uh, of course, ang pinaka-significant ay ang involvement po ng mga Baptists sa mga nag-frame ng Constitution ng U.S. At uh, marami po dyan sa mga uh, ama ng Constitution ng U.S. na itinayo ang religious freedom ay mga Baptists po. Sa kahit sa Wikipedia ay makikita nyo po ito. Kahit po ang PCEC, so ang simulain po ng PCEC, eh, naalala ko sila manong Fred Magbanwa, yan po yung mga conservative Baptists. Ano po, kahit ang uh, pinaka-national director ng PCEC ngayon na si Bishop Noel Pantoja ay kabilang po din yan sa mga uh, conservative Baptists. Marami po ang mga Baptists sa Philippines. Eh, sabi ko nga kanina, ay walang isang hierarchia po iyan. Each church is autonomous. Ano po, at marami, in fact, ang tinatawag na denominations ng mga Baptists, kabilang na rin dyan ang mga non-denominational na mga Baptists. Pero nagkakaisa po ang lahat ng mga Baptists patungkol sa number one, ang tungkol sa new birth na doctrine, tungkol sa kaligtasan, sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Kristo Jesus, at sa pagiging bahagi ng mga eklisiya, ng mga churches sa pamamagitan ng baptism. And of course, ang mga sumusunod po doon ay kung ano na ang maitutulong ng mga mana ng palataya sa lipunan sa government. At nais ko pong sabihin na Bishop? Naghang yata. Opo. Uh, before we continue, let me recognize the presence of our majority floor leader, Senator uh, Mig Subiri. Hello, good morning, uh, my dear friend, uh, Congressman Benny Abante, my dear, dear friend, and of course, uh, Bishop uh, Ruben Abante, and my dear uh, chairperson, my compadre, Sherwin. I just want to put on the onset that I'm uh, full, in full support of this measure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, if Thank I you. may continue. Yes, go ahead, Pope. Uh, okay. Uh, as uh, my brother has pointed out, na uh, uh, every church is autonomous. Uh, my good friend, uh, the majority leader, Mick Subiri, know that in Bukidnon, there are so many Baptist churches there. In fact, uh, in Bukidnon, that is one of the first provinces in which the Baptists put up their own hospital. Uh, uh, Senator Mixibiri knows about that, no? It's called the uh, Bethel Baptist Hospital. Yes. yes. <laughs> sikat na sikat po yan, uh, German. <laughs> Sa Ngayon, eh, Ngayon, as uh, has been said, that uh, the Baptist is very strong in his message of... Uh, of the born again uh, principle. We're very, very strong on that. It means that uh, we believe that it is not religion nor, nor churches that can actually change the hearts of men, but it is the Lord Jesus Christ himself that can actually change the hearts of men. That is one of the uh, very, very strong component of what the Baptists are. 
may I say that perhaps uh, rather than uh, call the Baptist a uh, a uh, one of the components of Protestantism in the whole world, I would like to say personally that we could be able to say that the Baptist is uh, part of the evangelical community in the whole world and also in the Philippines. In fact, uh, if you would know, uh, Mr. Chair, that the Southern Baptist Convention is one of the oldest and largest uh, Baptist group in the whole world. Now, we can be termed as denominations uh, or a big denomination in the world. In fact, uh, at one time, at one time, the Baptist community in the U.S. is the biggest uh, uh, religious group, so to speak, in the U.S. for many, many years. Uh, until such time that uh, we begin to evangelize the world and uh, evangelism reach our country. So, yun po ang gusto naming ipaliwanag na ang Baptist po ay kasama sa evangelical community at ang Baptist po ay napakahalaga po sa amin ang tinatawag naming the new birth. Ano po? The new birth. At marami tayong mga evangelicals. Kaya po tinawag kong evangelical community because the very common ground of the evangelical, evangelical community, as you have said, uh, Mr. Chair, is the born again experience just like what you said that you're a born again christian that is actually the common ground of the evangelical community in which the baptist is actually very strong thank you thank you uh congressman benny uh bishop ruben uh you may continue po you got up uh, earlier i'm i'm sorry po <laughs> bigla nag update yung aking net <laughs> network <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, yun po bale, nabanggit na po yata ng aking kapatid ang significance ng uh, uh, Baptist at kung ano ang tayo ng mga Baptist in terms of doctrine. Tama po yun na ang mga Baptist po ay ang pinaka, in fact, uh, naniniwala po tayo na ito ang pinaka mainstream ng tinatawag na evangelical Christianity. Uh, Bishop, is it correct to say that... Uh the uh, born again the born again christians and baptists are one and the same pardon well, me for my pardon me <laughs> for my ignorance uh, but this is a layman question no? and and i'm sure a lot of our uh, friends have this uh, in mind no but from a theological uh, theological standpoint is it one and the same well alam niyo po eh, i do not want to do a bible study here <laughs> pero ang sinabi po ng panginoon kay nicodemus ay uh, kailangan niyang uh, magkaroon ng new birth ang sabi niya you must be born again ang new birth po ay entry into the family of god ang lahat ng tao ay kinakailangan maging related sa diyos bilang ama sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Kristo. Pero hindi po yun ang entry sa, pag sa pagiging Baptist. Ang entry po sa pagiging Baptist ay ang bautismo. So, hindi po necessarily na kapag ang isa ay born again, siya ay Baptist na. Ibig sabihin, ang Baptist ay isa pong gawain, isang samahan ng mga na kay Kristo na sa bawat isa at sa harap ng Panginoon, ay meron silang covenant upang gawin ang kalooban ni Kristo sa kanilang komunidad, sa kanilang pamilya, sa kanilang lipunan. Kaya napakaganda po na ang bawat isa ay uh, ma maunawaan po iyan sapagkat yun na nagiging disiplina ng marami po. Eh. Kaya marami pong mga born again na ang church, hindi sila Baptist, eh, mas maganda po. Eh sabi nga po natin, eh kinakailangan kung ikay pinanganak, lumaki ka sa bahay. Sabagkat kapag wala kang tahanan, eh ang laki po sa layaw, eh parang ang sabi natin, Jeprox ang dating. Pero ang laki po sa gawain ng Panginoon ay nagkakaroon ng magandang katatayuan, hindi lang sa harap ng Panginoon, kundi sa harap ng lipunan. Kaya yan po ang significance ng pagiging Baptist. And uh, Bishop, I understand from uh, Congressman Benny, even though there are slight differences between born again, a born again Christian and a Baptist, 
from what I understand today, but they fall under the big umbrella of evangelical evangelicals. That's the okay. that's the common denominator. Tama po ba yung okay. understanding ho natin? Yes, because the term evangel evangelism po ay attach po yan sa mensahe ng the new birth. Kapag ang isang tao ay naniniwala sa evangelism, ang tinutukoy po niya ay yung mabuting balita tungkol kay Kristo Jesus. At yan ay tungkol sa new birth. Kahit po sila Billy Graham, sila Franklin Graham, sila Will Graham, ang mga known evangelists, mga Baptist po ang background nila. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I add Yes, to go what? ahead po, Kong Benny. Okay. Uh, also, in the realm of uh, uh, government, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to say that uh, the Baptist uh, statesmen in the U.S. Uh, were the ones that actually uh, uh, fought for the Bill of Rights in which we believe that uh, there ought to be freedom of religion in a free state. And we believe that, uh, that uh, this freedom is sacred. And if there is any freedom in the Constitution, that is the highest form of freedom, is the freedom of religion. And it is the Baptist people that fought that in America at one time because... Uh, there was a group of Protestants uh, named the Congregational would like to make the Protestant church to be a, uh, a state church of the U.S. because in many countries like Spain, like uh, the other countries that have made uh, a religion to be a state church. But uh, it was the Baptists that actually rejected the idea of a state church in a democratic society. We were the ones that actually fought for the freedom of religion. It means that every religion, every church has the right to promote, has the right to preach, has the right to teach whatever their, whatever their faith is. So perhaps uh, uh, it would be safe to say, Mr. Chair, that our Bill of Rights that we copied actually from the U.S. Bill of Rights, the Baptist statesman, the Baptist politicians were, were the ones that fought for it. We call it, Mr. Chair, soul liberty. Soul liberty. We believe that we ought to be free in a free state and that there, is a, there should be a healthy discussion and a healthy debate on uh, religion and faith in a nation that believes in freedom and democracy. That's the reason why, Mr. Chair, in 1986, uh, along with other Baptist leaders, uh, we uh, uh, organized the Bible Mode. The Bible Mode is a Bible Believers League for morality and democracy. We feel that we ought to be the guardians of morality in this country, and we feel that we ought to promote uh, democratic ideas and freedom in our own country. Today, Mr. Chair, the Bible more than 6,000 member pastors in the whole world. And we are perhaps uh, uh, active in lobbying for uh, moral values in the government. Although, siyempre, alam mo naman, uh, alam mo yung mga Baptists and Evangelicals, eh, uh, independent ang bawat isa niyan, no? Hindi po yan hierarchical. For example, hindi po kami naniniwala na kinakailangan eh, i-control mo yung mga tao mo kung sinong iboboto. But, but we provide character. We provide, uh, we provide uh, uh, moral uh, avenues in which our people should choose who to support. You see? And, and we study uh, every candidate. Just like I have studied my good friend, Mick Subiri. You know, <laughs> just like I know, uh, I know the, uh, I know the, the family, your family, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, is well known to me, especially your mother. So, you know, these are what the Baptists are, Mr. Chair. And I think that, uh, that the government now should, in a way, recognize the presence, the presence 
and the, what the Baptists have done in this country for about 122 years since the 1900s. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, uh, Senator Zbidi. Yes, since I have to leave the house, to, uh, we have a session at 10 o'clock um, and we have to log out. But before I do that, I'd like to uh, recommend approval of this measure on committee level. Uh, Sen uh, Congressman Benny Abante, my dear friend, Bishop Benny Abante, is absolutely correct. One of our um, uh, best citizens of Bukidnon, most of our best citizens of Bukidnon are Baptists. They're doctors, lawyers, yes. nurses, professionals. Um, the best hospital we have in Bukidnon now that's uh, privately owned is uh, Bethel Baptist Hospital in the city of Malay Balay. Um, they're very well respected members of the community in Bukidnon, and um, we're very proud of them. And I move, Mr. Chairman, that we approve this immediately on committee level and uh, pass it to me on plenary so that we can uh, tackle it uh, immediately as well for second and third reading. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, they deserve to be recognized as, uh, as a group, uh, as a, a church in our country. We've recognized many other uh, denominations. We should recognize as well our brothers and sisters in the Baptist community. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chairman. I may have to log out now. I would just like to thank my dear friends, um, Bishop Congressman Benny Abante, Sir Ruben Abante. Good to see you both. You're looking very well. Mr. And, Chair, uh, you have before, my support. before Senator Mix log out, uh, I would like to just, just thank him for that. In fact, uh, uh, Senator Mix, I am about to call you and ask uh, that if this is approved in the committee, that you would uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, agenda it right away in the plenary. Thank you very much. I read much. your mind. I read your mind, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you, I read your mind. You have to remember, uh, Chairman, yes, uh, Bishop Benny Abante was also my counterpart in the House. As uh, Not only were we, were we together with him, Chairman, we were together with the Bishop Abante, but we were also, he was our minority floor leader in the House. At one point in time, was the majority floor leader. So I cannot say no to him. And of course, to your <laughs> congregation. So, Mr. Mr. Chair, I just would like to say this before anything else, Noah. You know, President Mayor Erap talked to me, Senator Meigs, and he told me that, uh, you know, I do not like you because you belong to the Spice Boys. I said, <laughs> no, no, it is Meigs Subiri who belongs to the Spice Boys in Congress. <laughs> you, you, were, you were just old Spice. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> So, you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I move to approve on committee level. And uh, congratulations in advance uh, to our dear colleagues and friends from the Baptist congregation. And we will uh, see to it that we'll pass this as soon as possible time um, in plenary. Marami salamat po, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Uh, to the Abantes, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Majority Floor. And uh, definitely with the uh, motion of the... Uh, Good uh, majority floor leader, this uh, committee will definitely endorse uh, this bill to plenary for uh, deliberation and at the end uh, approval for its approval. And like I said earlier, we have enough time uh, and we will make sure that uh, uh, this bill uh, gets the uh, approval of our um, of plenary. Um, let me just uh, again. Uh, Bishop Ruben, just a few very basic questions no, so that we can put this uh, in the records and uh, people who will be interested in uh, the discussions of this bill can go back to the records and educate themselves and get information and see the rationale and the beauty why we uh, approve this uh, measure. Uh, one basic question, Bishop, is how many churches are there? Now, how, many church how many Baptist churches are there in our country? And uh, where is the uh, uh, where are they? Where is the majority of our churches located here in our country? Well, <clears throat> uh, mahirap pong sagutin yung tanong ninyo, Mr. Chair. For one, uh, sa SEC po, I, I think there are about twenty-five groups of Baptists registered. Doon lang sa mga Bible Baptists, for one, sa amin, sa Baptist Bible Fellowship, we would have about uh, six or 8,000 churches. 
the thing is because Baptist churches are not hierarchical and each one is autonomous, eh marami pong mga dugtong-dugtong yan na mga families sa mga communities para mga kabuti <laughs> ang paglago po niyan. Subalit nakatutulong ng malaki sa ating mga lipunan. Kung kaya, ito pong panukalang batas na ito ang magpapatatag sa presensya at significance at pagkilala sa kanila because they cannot be recognized as religion. They can only be recognized as significant entities wherever they are. And for sure, kahit anumang denomination po ng Baptist dyan, however independent or autonomous ang bawat church, pag nakilala po nila na binigyan sila ng magandang recognition ng ating batas at ng ating government, lalo po silang lulutang at magiging malaking tulong sa bawat lipunan. E ginagawa na rin naman po natin na ang bawat relihiyon ay binibigyan ng pagkilala sa ating lipunan. Hindi po yan magagawa sa mga Baptists. Ang pagkilala po sa mga Baptists, ayun lang, bilang mga Baptists, bilang mga churches, naroon lang po yun. Yun lang po ang hinihingi natin, makatutulong po ng malaki yan para sa ating mga lipunan. But, but yung tanong po ninyo, how many? Well, palagay ko po eh, ang sinasabi ng PCEC, there are about uh, 70,000, no? sa aggregation ng mga evangelical churches. Eh kabilang na rin po kasi diyan ang mga Protestant groups, ano po? Eh pag hindi naman po NCCP, eh PCEC. Ano po? Eh for one, kahit ako man po hindi naman ako member ng PCEC. Ano po? But I partner with them sa maraming engagements ng evangelism. Kaya napakalaking ano po, kung mga 25 to 30,000 churches, maliit po 'yon buong bansa. Yeah. So Bishop, so it's it's safe to say na ang uh, ang bilang po ng bas, Baptist churches in our country is around 25 to 30,000 more yes. or less. Yes. More or less. How about the members um Bishop, is there any guesstimate in terms of how many members uh, do we have in the Baptist churches? Just a guesstimate kung meron ho tayo. Well, kung nasa mga 30,000 po, eh, lagay na natin on the average na isang daan ang bawat, mem- ang bawat membership ng bawat congregation. Pero very, ano po yun, ah, very conservative po yun sapagkat yung churches lang po namin ng aming kapatid, eh, libo na. Ano po? So, uh, wala po talagang datos. Eh, kahit po sa amin challenge yan. Eh. We can only speak for about uh, the... Uh, Uh, Baptist Bible Fellowship or even the Bible Mode. Nabanggit po ng kapatid ko because ang Bible Mode po ay samahan at fellowship ng mga kapasturan. We have about 6,000 pastors representing churches sa amin po organization. Bishop, kung 100,000 yan and we're talking about let's say 30,000 churches so that's uh, 300,000 300 ah, hindi po 100 members per church Mr. Chair uh, Mr. Chair Yes go ahead Actually uh, there are uh, as I've said there might be around 30 or 35,000 Baptist churches in the country and they're both small and big no For example my church alone uh, Mr. Chair is 46 years old and uh, we have baptized More than 75,000. So, ang membership kasi ng Baptist is based on their baptism. Okay? Mm. So, sa isang, uh, sa isang church lamang, for example, yung church ko, has more than 75,000 all over the world. See? Uh, ang marami rin mga members ko are absentee voters in the Middle East. So, in, in reality, uh, Mr. Chair, napakahirap talaga na talagang mabilang natin accurately ang mga members ng mga Baptist churches because meron tayong Baptist church sa Cebu lang sa Cebu lang eh the Bible Baptist Church in Cebu which is the largest the largest Baptist church in the whole of Cebu province uh, would average uh, somewhere from 7 to 10,000 people every Sunday you see ako ang ang church ko 
we would average around uh, uh, 3,000 every Sunday attenders, ha? attenders. But of course, uh, kapag sa isang service namin, for example, na isang gabi, sa isang service namin, all right, we have an audience of about 17 to 20,000 in the internet for live streaming. No, so mahirap pero mahasabi ko na at least in the Philippines, at least in the Philippines, if we are going, kasi alam mo, ang hirap talaga nung uh, every church independent eh. Pero at least in the Philippines, conservatively, masasabi ko po, the Baptist people have at least 3 million people, 3 million membership among our churches today. Thank you, thank about, you. About 3 million. Yes, thank you, Kong Benny. So, just I, I just want to put on record a rough estimate. If uh, there are a hundred members per church, and we have thirty thousand churches, that's about three million members uh, conservatively. You no, know, because some of them will have probably ten thousand. I think some of the churches will have will run in the thousands. You know, so uh, we're looking at uh, three million members. Uh, roughly, no? Uh, just for, a good guess. Yeah, for, for example, like Mr. Chair, uh, I think you know Pastor Peter Tanchi, di ba? Yes, yes. Uh, Pastor Peter Tanchi is a good friend of mine who used to attend in the 1960s, no? In a Baptist church. In fact, if you will talk to him, you would yeah, they, he will tell you that his doctrine is more Baptistic. And you know for a fact that he is pastoring the CCF with thousands of members. You see, and that could be included among the Baptist people in a, in an evangelical setting. Thank you, um, um, Gong Benny. Uh, another basic question is the significance of January 16. Uh, bakit po January 16 ang uh, date ng ating uh, National Bible, National Baptist Day? Um, Mr. Chair, ako na po ang sasagot. Last January 16 po ng 2020 ay ang kauna-unahang pagkakataon na ang mga Baptists ay nagsama-sama under one roof. We had that celebration sa SMX. At uh, pinangunahan po namin magkapatid yun at Bible mode. At ako bilang uh, pinaka-convener ng Alliance of Baptist Councils, iba-iba pong grupo ng mga Baptists dyan, sa kauna-unahang pagkakataon, nag-agree kami na magkita-kita. So ito po ay nagrepresent ng marami mga Baptist groups sa bansa January 16 of 2020. Kaya doon doon din po na pinanganak yung ideya na nandito na rin lang tayo. Let's make this day even more significant and uh, move forward into uh, proposing a National Baptist Day. Yun lang po ang significance noon. But is there any historical significance, Bishop? For, exa for example, po, the day the Baptists arrived in the Philippines, or is there any... Uh, why, why January 16, po, out of um, curiosity? Uh, Mr. Chair, may I answer that? Uh, Go if ahead, we po. are going to uh, look into the history, uh, uh, the, the, the first Baptist that came to the Philippines would have been uh, in the 1900s, for example, uh, somewhere from May to September. Pero ginawa namin January, katulad ng sinabi ng aking kapatid, that because to us, two years ago, is very historic and very significant. Why? Because for the very first time, there were about six, six to seven thousand leaders that convened in the SMX in January 16 of 2020, Mr. Chair, no? And these are, are the aggregation of many different uh, uh, Baptist groups. For example, like uh, the, uh, the leader of the PCEC, who is the pastor also of a Baptist church, uh, the GCF, if you remember, the Guinness Kitchen Fellowship, the pastor Bishop Noel Pantoja, is a Baptist, and he is right now the uh, the uh, chairman, national director. Yeah, national director of the PCEC. He also was there. So therefore, yung January 16, Mr. Chair, 2020, 
doon lang nagkaroon talaga ng history. Alam mo naman yung mga yung mga evangelical community dahil sa pamilya yan eh uh, hindi nag-agree in some point yan eh. Ano? Pero for the very first time, Mr. Chair, nagkaroon kami ng agreement ng doon ng conservative Baptist in the person of uh, Pastor Noel Pantoja o oh, nandoon ng missionary Baptist in the person of Pastor Cesar Punsalan nandoon ng uh, IBMA in the person of Manny Quezon nandoon ng Southern Baptist in the person of uh, 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 former Undersecretary Dante Velasco oh, who is also a pastor nandoon din naman ang ABCLBM at ABWA alam nyo Ayoto lang, eh, just to tell, tell you na publicly. Nung araw, ang ABWE, uh, yung ABCLBM, is an offshoot of the ABWE. Alright? At meron silang differences. Pero for the first time, in January 16 of 2020, nagsama-sama po kami lahat. So to us, that is very historic. Uh, uh, not only that, because the Bible mode as the Baptist lobby group has always uh, has always had his conferences and conventions mr chair every second week of the month of january oo ngayon medyo medyo pinospon namin na last week ngayon meron kaming convention ngayon but in reality every year po every year po every second week of the month of january our pastors know that we're going to have the convention. That's the reason why when I, when I talk with Senator uh, Cynthia Villar, who is the principal author of this bill, I told, I told her that sana uh, we could be able to uh, maybe put um, an amendment that instead of saying it January 16, that we just say it to be the second, the second uh, Thursday or the second week, the second week of the month of January would be more of a National Baptist week in reality. That would be from Monday to Sunday, Mr. Chair. Anyway, it's a working holiday. Uh, pero, ang inaano ko, yung second, second uh, Thursday every January should be pronounced as the National Baptist Day. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Congressman Benny. And um, earlier, Bishop Ruben mentioned um, in the past there were a lot of uh, contributions no, by the Baptists to our country. Uh, can we name a few uh, important and significant contributions of the Baptist churches and the Baptist community to our country. Uh, just to put it on record, the uh, the long history and the long um, uh, uh, support that it, it's giving to our country, even though it's not getting uh, a lot of uh, media recognition or a lot of um, highlights, but silently, you know, the Baptist has been yes. uh, contributing to nation building. So. Just to put it on record, uh, Bishop, what are the significant uh, contributions? Well, of course, uh, Mr. Chair, the main contribution of the Baptists in the country is with regards uh, gospel, evangelism. And uh, there has never been any, uh, for me, no, there has never been any strong proponent in gospel, but the Baptists in the country. Uh, not only in the entry of the early Baptists in the 1900s here, uh, nagsimula po doon ang mga track giving, ang mga lahat ng evangelistic programs, even yung mga community-based na mga relief programs kapag may mga bagyo. Very significant po ang mga Baptists dyan. And uh, in the, the early years ng gospel natin, uh, lalo na pagpasok po ng mga 1950s, nagdagsaan na rito ang mga Baptist. And so yung missionary program ay naging napaka malaki po hanggang umabot na yan sa mga iba't ibang lugar. Sa advent ng, 
ng uh, mga evangelism efforts ng uh, Billy Graham Association who first came here in 1958 and then in 1977. Pumunta po rito ang uh, si Billy Graham, si uh, Franklin Graham of which ang inyo pong lingkod ang naging uh, pinaka general secretary ng mga engagements na yan, even Will Graham. Ano po? At umikot yan, nagkaroon ng mga evangelistic program, hindi lang sa Luneta, kundi sa Bicol, sa Cebu. Uh, naging significant po ang tulong ng mga Baptists dyan. Ang pagpasok ng Far East Broadcasting Company ay uh, significant din po. At lahat ng efforts ng uh, uh, media sa pamamagitan ng FEBC. Mga Baptist po rin ang nasilikuran yan. Hindi lang natin tinatawag ng mga Baptist sapagkat ang ating ina up front ay ang gospel. Yun naman po talaga ang pinakamensahe po natin. Ang mga relief programs po na ginagawa ng mga Baptists ay uh, ganun na lang din po. Nung nagkaroon tayo ng bagyo, for example, doon sa Yolanda, no? nagkaroon tayo ng ondoy, napakalaking tulong po. Ang, yun nga lang po, eh, napakatahimik na kumikilos ang marami mga Baptists. Kahit po ngayon sa Odet, uh, sa nangyayari, kahit ang Bible mode, malaki na ang tulong sa marami mga churches at uh, sa mga pamilya. Sa bagay ng edukasyon, ano po, nabanggit na ng kapatid ko kanina ang ating mga educational facilities. Ano po, sa uh, Negros, ano po, at uh, sa Visayas. Ang mga ospital, ano po, uh, malaking bagay din po iyan. So, tahimik lang, subalit uh, naking malaking tulong po sa ating bansa. Thank you, Bishop. I am a, a first-hand uh... I had first hand uh, I I'm a first hand uh, uh I have a first hand experience with FEBC. Uh mm -hmm. FEBC is founded in uh, Valenzuela. Uh, they have a yes. very beautiful campus, very beautiful compound there and um I I I've been there many many times. Uh, in fact, now it we converted that into a uh, park, you no, know, because of oh, the boy. massive trees that uh uh, the Baptist planted a long hundred years ago, matagal na huyan, eh? yes. a long time ago. Uh, I think it was during the Americans pa nga when they started uh, uh, investing in Valenzuela. But now, uh, Bishop, uh, FEBC located in uh, one corporate center. Opo. Of which and, our family uh, business is located in that building also. So I've <laughs> been to that uh, uh, penthouse. I think the the uh, yes. office is uh, at the penthouse level. I've been there yes. many times to be interviewed. Nandun po kami sa dalawang building, yung one corporate center, tsaka sa Antel. And may I just, just use this opportunity, Mr. Chair, to extend our thanks to you even uh, on behalf of the Far East Broadcasting Company. Ako po bilang vice chairman ng board, ay uh, pinapaabot ko sa inyo ang ating pasasalamat sa inyong partnership sa maraming panahon, ang inyong pamilya. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bishop. Is it, uh, Chair? To... Yes, uh, Congressman Benny. Go ahead, May Paul. I add that uh, the Baptist churches has around uh, 1,200 1, Christian schools in the country, no? from preschool to high school. And I think that would be a very good contribution towards uh, education because our Christian schools are very very good in well, not only in academic excellence, but uh, also in character excellence. That could be a good contribution. And uh, just to add to what Kong Benny and uh, Bishop Ruben mentioned, in the realm of education, I, I had, again, first-hand experience with uh, um, uh, Baptist uh, in action in education. Uh, when we were discussing the uh, alternative learning system law, uh, one of the most active uh, organizations in ALS is a group called SULADS in Mindanao. And it's uh, headed by uh, Pastor Pitogo, who is a Baptist. No? Uh, he's, a, he's a Baptist uh, pastor in Mindanao. And uh, part of their corporate social responsibility 
is to uh, promote alternative learning system to those who are marginalized and to those who didn't finish school. So that is my first-hand experience with, uh, with an organization who is backed by the Baptist Church in Mindanao. So ganda ho, ganda. that program is such a successful program. So we'll move to uh, Dole since we have, um, just to make this discussion holistic and complete, uh, we're joined by uh, Ms. Emilia de Guzman and uh, we'd like to hear comments from her considering that this is a special working holiday. So again, no, just for the information and or just for the education of those who are listening to us today, uh, ano bang implication itong uh, uh, special working holiday. So may we call Ms. Emilia de Guzman? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, sa lahat po ng mga members of the community, uh, com committee, good morning po. Uh, the DOLE fully supports the intent of the bills as the observance is considered as an ordinary working day for workers in the public and private sector. So this is in line with the DOLE's trust in uh, recommending that instead of ob uh, observing it, uh, proposed measure, uh, declaring it a special non-working day, it be declared as a special working holiday. So in sum, uh, the DOLE fully supports the intent and of the bill and we interpose no objection on the matter. Salamat po. So Ma'am Emily, just, just for the information everyone and to put it on record, with the declaration of a special working holiday uh, on the, uh, I think the net new proposal is second Thursday of January. There's no uh, implication when it comes to the compensation of our employees and the businesses. There's no implication also in terms of adding uh, benefits or adding a certain amount uh, correct. when we declare this a special working holiday? Yes, correct po, Mr. Chair. So, hindi ho dadag, in short, hindi ho dadagdagan yung sweldo uh, under a special working holiday arrangement? Yes, Mr. Chair. Kasi it is considered and, as ordinary working day lang po. Although okay. Although may observance and, po. Go ahead po, ma'am. Okay, oh. Yun po, may observance on the, ano, on the, the uh, on the celebration. Okay. And then, kaya, kung... As Sige, ho, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, wala pong effect naman sa mga workers, uh, tsaka sa employers. Pag hindi ho siya pumasok, assuming he's a Baptist, and hindi siya pumasok, uh, he will not get paid of, also. Uh, the principle of no work, no pay shall apply. Oh, unless uh, right. meron siyang leave credits, pwede pong i-committin yung kanyang leave credits para mabayaran yung araw na yun. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you po. With that, uh, the majority floor leader actually called my attention because we will be starting our session uh, uh, any minute now. So with that, uh, we are uh, endorsing this bill to plenary uh, so that uh, plenary can approve this bill and finally turn it into a law. So thank you very much to our resource persons. Please send us your position paper. I know we have other guests here. Please send us your position paper. Uh, I'm very sorry if I didn't call everyone because we are only given uh, one hour and I wanted to talk to the proponents and uh, let the proponents explain properly and put into the records the rationale for this very important measure. So I thank uh, Bishop Ruben, and of course, to our family friend, uh, Congressman Benny. Congressman Benny, I hindi ko makakalimutan nung pumunta kayo sa lamay po ng aking uh, lola 10 years ago. Yeah. You, know, you, were the, you were the only politician who went there. I was the mayor <laughs> back, back then, but I cannot forget it because you were the only politician who went there. So, but thank you to uh, Bishop Proven, to Congressman Benny, and of course, to all our guests for... Uh, uh, sharing with us your thoughts on this measure. Feel free to send us uh, your position paper so we can put that uh, into the records. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po. Uh, this meeting is hereby suspended. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. God bless you all.